In today's video, as we've been doing for so long, we're going to be taking a look here at the tropics as activity is still ramping up quite a bit. We do have Tropical Storm Dawn, our other tropical disturbance that we're still tracking very, very closely. Uh, we are also going to be talking about the upcoming pattern for the lower 48, where we do have a lot of thunderstorm activity potentially on the way uh heavier precipitation flooding risk things like that and then eventually it's, it's kind of confusing but we're actually going to see uh a very very big warm up in the east i'm not going to downplay it it looks very very severe the potential heat wave on the way uh, and then actually behind that afterwards what we're going to see is a bit of a backdoor cold front uh, and then it's going to bring a, a big cool down here for the northeast and mid-atlantic so we're going to be talking all about these things also, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below. We do weather consulting calls once a week. We have early releases of our seasonal and monthly forecasts. And we also have some very, very awesome things on the way in the near-term future that I'm very, very excited about. So be sure to check that out. Let's get into things. As you can see, we do have Tropical Storm Dawn. And this one is currently at 65 miles per hour, sitting just about 10 miles per hour under hurricane status. And it's very, very far north, as you can see. Very close to that 45 north line, uh, which is very far north for a, st a storm to be intensifying this much. But something that we're going to be talking about over the coming days and weeks is just how intense the heat is in the Atlantic. We are at record-breaking levels for this time of year as far as how warm the Atlantic is overall. And honestly, it's not even close, okay? So it's not even like it's just narrowly the most warm. It is like significantly warmer than the second warmest for this time of year. So we are looking at crazy levels of heat in the Atlantic. The ocean is very warm here in Virginia. I've been recently, it's, it's comfortable, which is not usual for this far north, uh, especially this early in the season. Usually August, September, it's at, at its very warmest. So definitely looking at above normal sea surface temperatures, even very close to the United States as well. As you can see, our tropical disturbance over here, I don't want to ramble on too long. We actually have seen a decrease in the probability, and I was thinking this was a possibility. Uh, we see now a 30% chance of development over the next 48 hours, and then a 40% chance over the next seven days. Uh, so definitely... Uh, a very, very intense uh, decrease in that percentage. I mean, we've seen 20, 30% drop here over the last 24 hours. And I want to say it's due to how far suppressed this storm has become. Look at how it's almost on like a southern trajectory here. It's very far south and it would have to basically curve northward and take a very far kind of northwest direction in order for it to get back into favorable conditions. So already this one is showing signs of being more and more suppressed which is not good for tropical development. It is good news for everybody in this one's path, but it is in much more dry and much more high shear conditions right now. And that is probably why we've seen the decrease in that percentage, uh, a drastic decrease, as I mentioned before. The cone forecast here, as you can see through the day today, we do expect to remain at tropical storm status, but very quickly, we're gonna drop back down to post tropical storm status there at uh, by 8 a.m. tomorrow and then probably post tropical depression by 8 p.m. tomorrow so somehow it's going to go from almost a hurricane right now down to tropical depression status within uh, about 36 hours we'll call it so we will see if that ends up happening that way that is a sharp decrease this is very far north it's in much more volatile conditions up there in the in the far north of the atlantic and this one's going to be need to be watched though i think there is some interesting things that can happen here and I mean, with the intensity it's at right now, we cannot rule out a brief transition to hurricane status, which I think would be very interesting. Obviously, this one not impacting land. I'm pretty safe to cheer for the craziest situation because I think it would just be interesting uh, and a very, very big testament to how warm the Atlantic is, as I've mentioned already a couple of times in this video. As we just dive into the upcoming pattern, we can see even by this afternoon, uh, we're seeing this jet stream that I've been talking about here. And when it looks like this, obviously we have this kind of tropical jet mixing in with everything. And this is what's bringing a lot of our thunderstorm activity to the Southeast, the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest, the Northeast. We're seeing plenty of areas dealing with some thunderstorms flaring up today. But again, especially near this jet stream that's dipping South uh, into the deeper South. This also can lead towards uh, more thunderstorm activity. Uh, and, and the reason for this is uh, more intense thunderstorm activity, that is. And that's because we're getting a lot of shear compared to what's normal because of that jet being nearby. And this can lead towards more impacts from these thunderstorms than what would be really possible in a more stagnant con conditions, if that makes sense. So that's another thing that I'm kind of thinking about here and, and really want to be watching. 
By Monday afternoon, what we see is, again, we still have this massive ridge in the west and a bit of a trough here in the east. Uh, but it's starting to softening out. We're really seeing this uh, kind of tropical jet still getting involved, maybe even a little bit of a low trying to develop here offshore. But nevertheless, what we're seeing here is some thunderstorm activities up and down the East Coast, all the way from Florida up to New York, Vermont, and uh, New Hampshire there as well. So and everywhere in between, uh, with the most intense being kind of near Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina area, it looks like for tomorrow afternoon. That's going to be something to watch closely. Uh, now, by Tuesday afternoon here, we could see that there is some thunderstorm activity here in the northeast. Uh, we could see some Rockies uh, areas dealing with this into the plains. And then for the northwest into the southwest of Canada there, uh, we can see that there is a lot of thunderstorms happening in this area as well, if not just rainfall. It is a very, very mountainous area, probably cooler as well. Uh, so there is some factors at play. I mean, there is a couple of areas with some thunderstorms here by Wednesday. I want to just kind of mark them out. But I mean, looking at the whole grand scheme of things here in the lower 48, you can kind of notice that things have quieted down quite a bit by Wednesday. That's kind of my main takeaway here. Thursday here, we do see some activity as there's 1,005 here, 1,005 there, 1,004 here. So what this leads towards is scattered about activity pretty much for all of these areas here, as you can see, but it's not too consistent. Uh, there is some areas like here in uh, Minnesota, here in Canada, where it's a little bit more uh, persistent and consistent there with that precipitation still nothing crazy uh, as we move towards friday here uh, on the 28th we could see that there is some thunderstorm activity happening here for the north uh, of the rockies and the plains there uh, from the upper midwest into the ohio valley and northeast here as well we're seeing some of this uh, let's keep going though and as you can see by saturday afternoon it's a lot of the same the northern folks up here getting the most activity and this is where the jet stream is at by this point because we start to get a ridge so it makes sense so now we see the the jet stream doing this there it does look like there is some moisture coming through uh, from mexico perhaps and, and playing a role here this gulf of mexico jet is kind of sitting very very slow and only really impacting uh, Florida and surrounding states just because it's, it's a lot weaker without that big northern jet being able to take a, a big role in this. By Sunday, what we're seeing is, again, the jet stream is pulling these thunderstorms here. Uh, we're starting to see the cold air push down the east coast now. Again, that backdoor cold front uh, situation that we've been talking about uh, through the beginning of this video. Monday, we do actually get a little bit of a low developing near New England, and this leads towards some northeast thunderstorms. And then we also see for the plains through kind of the Midwest area, some thunderstorms here as well and that's again monday the 31st finally we move into august 1st and what we see is again a situation where this cold front is able to push this jet stream far enough south uh, to where i'm seeing much more of something like this so something along these lines and we once again get this kind of tropical jet at play here for early august and what this ends up doing is bringing, again, thunderstorms from the deeper south through the southeast, mid-Atlantic, into the northeast. So that is uh, what we're seeing mostly here. We also have some thunderstorms riding along this northern jet into the plains, diving southward. So a lot of interesting things looking to happen by the end of July into the beginning of August. Now, as we take a look at this total precipitation here, we can see for the northern plains into the northeast, we have this kind of stretch of higher amounts. And this is an area that we talked about quite a bit there in this video. So it makes sense. Uh, and then also the southeast where that kind of tropical jet gets a little bit more involved. So two different areas makes a lot of sense based on what we just talked about. We're watching the yellows for slightly above average to around average precipitation. So if you happen to be in one of the yellow areas, that's what you're dealing with. Anything under that, like blues, greens, grays, or even whites, is going to be pretty much normal to below normal precipitation over the next 10 days. The reds, however, are the areas that we're really keying in on for some above average activity. That's going to be two to five inches over a 10 day period. It could look a little bit different than this, obviously, in real life, um, as it always tends to do. But uh, these are the areas that we have the highest chance of seeing above average precipitation over the next 10 days. So basically through August 2nd. Now, the temperature pattern is interesting here. We're dealing with a little bit of a cool down, but I'm not going to lie. It's very hot out there today. I went out there. The sun is bright. Uh, it's still mid 80s uh, and it's still going to be very, very hot for most people. Um, as you can see, this cool down does really, really quickly come to an end, mostly due to this cooler air diving southward down the West Coast. And this is going to encourage more negative PNA type pattern. And what that does is we see the jet stream doing something like this. So we're going to see this heat really, really funnel into this area here in the east, as we talked about in the beginning of the video. 
and that is what I expect to see here for the very, very end of July. And there is our emojis of the day, every single day that tends to happen. Uh, so now it's falling in line exactly with what I just uh, kind of stated there. We see much more, I also messed up, here we go. So we see much more like this type of a situation. And look, these reds here that you can see through the Ohio Valley, the upper Midwest and some of the Northeast there, that is 10 to 15 degrees above normal. So this is pretty much 90s and to maybe around 100 degrees for some of these areas. So this is significant heat. It looks to be kind of long lived. Um, anything over three days is officially a heat wave. And I think we'll get right around three days of that pretty large amount of heat. Uh, what we start to see happen is uh, by the time we're reaching the first here, is again this cooler air mass that's setting up over southeast Canada into the northeast of the United States. And another thing to note here is we see the warming back up of the west, which leads towards uh, a positive PNA taking place. And this is gonna encourage this cooler air to really, really take place. And it just sticks around through August 5th, August 7th here at the end of the model, uh, the model run here. We see that the east coast is basically dealing with near normal to below normal temperatures, which again will be a very, very nice relief from that heat, it'll take us down from the uh, low to mid 90s, back down probably into the mid 80s um, and, and maybe even lower 80s, depending on how intense it is. So that will be very, very warmly welcomed. It will still be warm, but in the grand scheme of things, that is colder air for this time of year. And that is what our expectations are at right now. Anyway, be sure to subscribe for daily uploads just like this one. Le uh, hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload. Don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.